Hi guys, I'm Lawrence and in this video we're going to take a look at dynamic v static programming languages and the pros and cons of each. Stay tuned until the end and I'll give my thoughts and opinions on when you should use static and when you should use dynamic programming languages. If you enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, hit the ding dong bell and let's get on with the video. So first of all, what do we mean by static and dynamic? Well, all programming languages can fall into one of these two categories. So what does that mean? Well, with static languages, static languages mean that the typing is very static. So when you create a variable, you cannot change its type. So, for example, if I was to create a variable in, let's say, a statically typed language like Java or Haxi or any sort of language like that, I would have to define either initially the value type, whether that be a string, a number, a primitive, an object, an array, and of course that will then be typed to that specific value. So, for example, if I created a variable, now the value is variable but the type isn't, so I would create a string and then I would be able to update it with a new string. However, if I then tried to, let's say for example, put in a number into that static variable type, it would then error. This is what static languages are. They don't let you just chop and change, dynamically changing the value type, but they will let you possibly change the value. This does make your application a little bit more robust because the compiler will be able to check before it actually puts out your code that you are not assigning anything that could thus otherwise disrupt or denounce that value type. So it won't let you create a variable with a string type and then later on assign a number type later on in your program. So it will keep things very static and very clear as to what is allowed to be stored where. This does add a bit more verbosity to the code and also it can make things a little bit more tricky. However, even though that adds to the verbosity, that also means that it's not really for beginner programming languages, such as JavaScript. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. What that means is your types are dynamic, your types are variable. So with let and var, you would be able to update the value, but also you will be able to change the value type upon assignment. So for example, if I created a variable and put a string into it, and then I assigned a number back to that variable, it would let me do that in JavaScript because the types are dynamic, they're interchangeable. So that is what we call dynamic. It's dynamically changing the value type of that container, of that variable or let, depending on what you've assigned to it. Now the reason why this may be a drawback is because number one, you don't get those compile time checks because with dynamic, you can assign any value type to any variable and also it's not as fast necessarily when running and compiling whereas if you are static it knows what it needs and it knows what it needs to do and it won't change the dynamic type and then on top of that what's really great about static v's dynamic is that static is more predictable so when you access that variable you will know it is of that type Whereas with JavaScript, because things can actually change from a string to an object to an array to anything you wanted, a number of boolean, you may have to do preliminary checks there before you go ahead and access the data because it could well have changed and it can change dynamically in the runtime as well. Now another major plus of choosing a proper statically typed programming language is the fact that well, it does those checks also at runtime. So that means it's not just compile time that it can check, it's at runtime, it will also error if you try to assign a different value type. So that's great, but it does mean that you've got to be very careful and it's easier to break your application. But the good news is once it breaks your application, it is broken and you will have to fix it. So that makes your application more robust. 
And to counterweight this, even JavaScript has a superset, a language that wraps around JavaScript that does the type checking only at compile time. So this is called TypeScript. So TypeScript will allow you to write interfaces that create basically an object structure and, and allow you to check that object structure against the interface and make sure that it matches all of its key and value pairs. It will allow you to create typed arrays, uh, typed variables as well, such as string, number, boolean, so forth. And it will check it at compile time. So any code that you're running in TypeScript, it will check it only when the program is compiling to make sure that you're not changing or dynamically changing that variable type. However, I do want to stress the point that it is not runtime. TypeScript is only when you compile. However, if at runtime you change the values dynamically, it's still JavaScript that it ultimately transitions into, and therefore it's still dynamically typed. So the strengths and weaknesses of these particular types of language, static and dynamic, is number one, that static is usually faster because it doesn't have to recreate certain things in memory as you develop. So everything in JavaScript is an object, a string, a Boolean, everything is actually an object. Even though you're writing just a string or Boolean, it's actually wrapping that in an object such as new string or new Boolean. So every time that you change these variable types, it's actually having to rewrap and rechange things. And that kind of makes things a little bit slower. Whereas with static languages, it doesn't need to do that. It's set and forget. Now you can't forget as a programmer, but for the computer, it says only a string can live here or only a number or only this type of object can live here with this interface. And therefore it doesn't actually have to rewrap the value. What it can do is just stay as it is. That makes it just that little bit faster. And of course, more robust with compiled applications that want to compile everything. Unlike JavaScript that isn't really compilable in that sense, it's more just in time compilation which means that it's doing the compilation at certain runtimes. I promised at the start of this video to reveal when I would use static and when I would use dynamic programming languages. So no doubt that dynamic programming languages are much easier. JavaScript is a lot easier, it's a lot less verbose. So I would recommend that for a beginner and smaller scale applications. So the smaller the scale is, the less likely we're gonna need those checks and balances. But when it comes to large scale application and e-commerce data, for example, that needs to be very specific on its interfaces and very specific in its APIs, those statically typed languages are much more robust for that. And it also helps identify objects with interfaces and helps identify all sorts of things that would not be obvious. For example, you could assign several different objects and you wouldn't really know what type of object that is. Is it a car type object? Is it a product type object? Is it a cart type object? Well, you wouldn't really know with a dynamically typed language unless you had a specific schema for those objects and everybody followed that schema. Hence why large scale applications can become a little bit wobbly when it comes to dynamically typed languages. With statically typed, you have to match that interface exactly, you have the checks and balances, and you can check that object against the interface to say, does this object marry up with the credentials of the interface? And then it has to be that type of object, whether it be a product or a cart item or whatever it is. That makes larger scale application development between multiple developers just that little bit easier. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully now you have a better understanding of when to use static and dynamically typed languages. So go ahead, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ding dong that bell, join the Avalex mailing list, link in the description down below, and in the mailing list you'll get so much more free resources, source code, and the entire job lot, loads of free goodies. Check that out in the description down below, and here are some more videos that you may be interested in.